An important idea in elementary mathematics is the idea of a unit. A unit is a single object or a set of objects we treat as a single object. For example, an egg is a unit, but 12 eggs is also a unit, which we happen to call a dozen. Similarly, a year is a unit of time, but 100 years is also a unit of time, which we call a century. A cent is a unit of money, and 25 cents is another unit of money, which we call a quarter. So it's helpful to remember that arithmetic is bookkeeping. We're trying to keep track of how many of which units. Now, in our system of writing numbers, our units are ones, a unit consisting of 10 ones, which we call a 10, a unit consisting of 10 tens, which we call a 100, a unit consisting of 10 hundreds, a thousand, and so on, even though we might not have names for the higher units. Since each unit is 10 times the size of the previous unit, we say that our system is base 10. So when we write a number, we record how many of which units with the smallest units corresponding to the rightmost place. So we should record the units. So maybe we have 100, two tens, and three ones. But as long as we're agreed on what the base is, we can omit the units and write this as one, two, three. Numbering in a different base might seem exotic, but there are bases we commonly use in specific situations. So for example, consider the coins penny, nickel, quarter. Each of these is five of the smaller. So five pennies are equivalent to one nickel. Five nickels are equivalent to one quarter. Since each is five of the smaller, this is base five. Another common situation we encounter is when we are dealing with things like eggs. We have a single unit, a dozen, and a gross. Each of these is 12 of the smaller, and so this is an example of base 12. And one of the more important bases, consider the time units, second, minute, hour. Each is 60 of the smaller, and so this is base 60. An important idea to keep in mind is that the base is independent of the item counted. We see base 5 in currency, but we can use base 5 to count the days of the week. And while we ordinarily see base 12 when counting eggs, we could use base 12 to count money. And even though base 60 is most familiar when we talk about time, we can use base 60 to count people. So what if we're using a different base? As long as we write the units, it doesn't matter. So, for example, if I write down one quarter, two nickels, three pennies, this amount is obviously different from one hundred, two tens, three ones. But if we drop the units, how can we distinguish between them? And so, to avoid confusion, we usually spell the base out. So, one quarter, two nickels, three pennies, well that's really one, two, three, base five. Meanwhile, one hundred, two tens, three ones, well that's one, two, three, base ten. Now since base ten is our usual number system, we might omit the ten. So we would write one, two, three, base ten, just as one, two, three. Because base 60 shows up often enough, there are three common ways to write a number in base 60, and it's useful to remember numbers in base 60 are like recording time in seconds, minutes, and hours. So suppose we have 5 hours, 10 minutes, 30 seconds. We could write this in a number of different ways. We could separate the places with commas and write 5, 10, 30. The comma separator is the most common in mathematics, but in everyday life we often see slightly different forms. So another common way of representing numbers in base 60 is to separate the places with colons. 5, colon 10, colon 30. And this is what you see on a digital clock. 
And on train and airport schedules, you might also see all of the numbers run together using two digits for any single digit amount. So 051030 with nothing separating the places. And again, remember the base is independent of the item counted. A number in base 60 could be a length, an area, a number of people, or an amount of money. Now, it's sometimes helpful to get an idea of what these numbers are, so let's interpret 4, 30. Because of the way it's written, we should assume this is base 60, and so 4, 30, well, the rightmost place corresponds to the ones, so that's 30 ones. The next place over is a 60, so that's 4 60s. So 4, 30 would be 4 60s, 30 ones. And what's important here is this is how you really should read it. This is 4 60s, 30 ones, and that's all there is to the interpretation. But you might want to know what that is in a more familiar form, so let's take a look at that. 4 60s is what we ordinarily think about as 240. And 30 ones is what we ordinarily think about as well, 30. Arithmetic is bookkeeping. So when we've recorded that we have four 60s and 30 ones, that's another way of saying that we have 240 plus 30, 270. We can also go the other way and express a number in base 60 like 150. So remember, arithmetic is bookkeeping how many of which units. In base 60, our units are going to be 1s and 60s. So let's take a look at that 150. Since 150 is more than 60, we know there's going to be a couple of 60s. And in fact, if I take two 60s, that's 120. And that means I have 30 1s left over. So that says two 60s and 30 ones is the same as 150. And again, arithmetic is bookkeeping. We want to record how many of which units. So in base 60, 150 would be two 60s and 30 ones, which we write as two comma 30. Now, all of the preceding is useful to convert back and forth between base 10 and base 60, but actually there's no good reason to switch between bases. And a useful idea to remember is that if you're given numbers in base 60, you should compute with numbers in base 60.